This is a Fifth Estate winning headlines, your media police post. In this segment, we summarize some of the headlines that you may have missed this morning, but we also take a look at the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. Today is the 17th of May 2022, and I am 2J. I am JM. And I am Miss K. Again, in case you missed today's headlines, here they are Daily Nation, Strength of a Woman. The Standard, Rise of the Iron Lady. The star, Ryla bets big on Mount Kenya women vote. Mm. And finally, People Daily, Karua lights up Ryla ticket. Mm. Let's re get right into it, 2J. I think I'll take us back to what happened on Saturday, Ruto's uh, running mate announcement. Yes. Because in his mad dash to the presidency, William Ruto has revealed a few simple truths about himself. Allow me to highlight just two. Mm. One, in order for Ruto to win the election, he has shown us how desperate he is for the Gemma vote. He needs a minimum, 90% from the mountain. Mm. And this is why he has courted them for the past five years. And two, he has seen the horrors of a rebellious deputy president, and he will not let that happen to himself. Yeah. So if this is the case, and I could be wrong, what on earth possessed William Ruto to select Rigavi Gashagwa as his running mate? Mm. Rigavi satisfies the first truth. He's a Kikuyu. But Rigavi is also a vocal strong man with powerful grassroots support. Mm -hmm. Guaranteed he will be a nuisance deputy. That's right. Which makes me wonder, uh -huh. has Ruto set himself up for failure? Uh -huh. Or is there something we are not seeing? Mm. I am of the opinion that William Ruto has lied to country when he picked Rigavi as his running mate. Mm. And I want to use game theory to explain why. So in game theory, one key assumption is that every person is rational and self-interested when making decisions. Mm -hmm. Rational means that one makes decisions based on reason or logic. And self-interested assumes that individuals are motivated by their own advantage or gain. You put these together, and the conclusion is that people make the best possible decision that gives them the best possible outcome. Yeah. <clears throat> Baba chose Martha Karua for optics and voter appeal. She's a woman with strong convictions, and she's a Kikuyu who can sway the Gemma vote in his favor. Simply put, Martha is good for Baba. Mm. Mr. Ruto, on the other hand, seems to have done the opposite. With all the options in front of him, he made the worst possible choice, and he did it on purpose. And so if Regavi is bad for Ruto, why did he choose him? Mm. Maybe a bad decision today is a good choice in the long run. Mm. So my submission is that Ruto has conceded today by choosing Regavi because he will fix him if he wins the election. Mm. Regavi's short-term function must be money and votes. He has deep pockets that make a campaign move. Mm. And he will deliver the Gemma vote. But following that, he will cease to be useful. Mm. Do not forget, Rigavi is facing an allegation of corruption in the court. If he's found guilty, Ruto wouldn't waste a second impeaching his deputy. Mm. Or is it simply that William Ruto is planning to rebirth BBI under a different name? Mm. If he does this, the Prime Minister post will completely dilute whatever power the DP has. Mm. Long and short of it, Rigavi Gashagwa has been set up. The only thing that William Ruto is more afraid of than the ICC is having a deputy president who will do to him what he has done to Uhuru Kenyatta. So his claim that he will sign an executive order on his first day to expand the capacity of the DP's office yeah. is a fat lie. That's right. William Ruto is playing the long game. He's campaigning in inspiring poetry, but he will govern in prose. Rigavi, I'm sorry, but you've been played. Mm. Now, <laughs> let me flip it. Uh -huh. What if William Ruto is the one being played? Uh -huh. I'll get there. Forget my Laudinga, but forget William Ruto. Mm. Today, I want to talk about the Gemma Nation and how foxy the Gemma Nation is. If there is one thing this past weekend has taught us is Wakikuyu Musiwabebe Malenge. They have a scheme and they are executing it with German precision. Mm. Let me explain. Last month, I submitted that Ekikuyu will never tell you 
the price of their wares 10 days before market day mm -hmm. or five days or two days for that matter he will only tell you his price on market day yeah. sunday was market day for william ruto monday was market day for raila odinga and what appears to have happened is that the two presidential candidates were given an ultimatum by their respective kikuyu god fathers mm. let me paint a hypothetical picture of what i want to believe went down this past weekend Raila's political godfather, that is Uhuru Kenyatta, told him, my big brother, if you want me to give you the presidency, you have no choice but to make a Kikuyu your deputy. And not just any Kikuyu, mm -hmm. but a Jaba, meaning a Kikuyu of a warrior status, because that is what the Kikuyu nation needs yeah. now. A willful leader who has proven her loyalty to her community and to the nation of Kenya, mm -hmm. Martha Kalua. Similarly, Kule Karin, William Ruto, political godfather, uh, being regarded as Shagwa, told him, if you want Mount Kenya to give you the presidency, you have no choice but to make Ekikuyu your deputy. Mm. And Rigadi must have told Ruto precisely what Uhuru said to Raila. You will not appoint just any other Kikuyu you so wish. The Kikuyu you will appoint has to also be a Jaba. Jaba. Mm -hmm. He or she has to be a Kikuyu of warrior status. Now, in UDA, there's only one Kikuyu who fits that description. <laughs> one Joffrey Rigadi Gashawa, mm. a man of steel, a man of means, a total man. The only man, the only kind of man in UDA that can stand up to William Ruto. <laughs> the only kind uh, of Kikuyu in UDA with the balls to eventually do to William Ruto politically what Brutus did to Julius Caesar. Mm. What am I saying? Regardless of being on one side or the other, what Uhuru and Rigadi have shown us this weekend is Kikuyu's Hatu Pangwingui. You may not realize it now, but Rigadi Gashawa, much as he is wandering in the wilderness, mm. has done Kikuyu's proud. He has shown up for Gemma. He has put Gemma interests first. I can bet you Rigadi told Ruto to his face, over my dead body, is Gemma going to be led by a colorless, spineless, amateur politician. Mm -hmm. The <laughs> likes of uh, Professor Kendiki, Ondin Dinyoro, Okimani Ishungwa. Mm. Lastly, I want to predict that when UDA enter the opposition, as they surely will in August 2022, Rigadi Gashawa will be the first one to fall out with William Ruto, yep. and it will be a bitter grand mm -hmm. fallout. And when he does, he will lead the entire battalion of Central Kenya MPs out of UDA and back into the fold where they belong into the Azimio coalition. Amen. So here's a reminder to William Ruta. Kikuyus are not stupid. Mm -hmm. Kikuyus cannot be hoodwinked. And Kikuyus know their worth. Ooh, powerful words We'll there. see who fixes who first, right? Yeah, we'll see who absolutely. fixes who first. It's a race for the fixing. <laughs> I'm going to flip it and talk about yesterday. Martha Karua is the Azimio La Umoja running mate, and the euphoria nationwide is infectious. Mm -hmm. Overnight, enemies have become friends, and UDA supporters have become Azimio supporters, all under the banner of the Iron Lady. Mm -hmm. The question I have is, what really is the effect of having a woman as a running mate? Allow me to answer this question with a little borrowed history from America. America is, after all, our SI unit for democracy. Mm -hmm. So in America's 200-year history, only three women have been officially nominated to run for the office of vice president. Kamala Harris in 2020, nominated by the Democratic Party. Sarah Palin in 2008, nominated by the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. And Geraldine Ferraro in 1984, nominated by the Democratic Party. Sarah Palin and Geraldine Ferraro were selected because the presidential campaigns were dying and needed the women to jolt the campaigns back <laughs> to life. In the language of American football, choosing a woman as a running mate was the same as making a Hail Mary pass. Mm -hmm. A Hail Mary pass is a very long forward pass in American football. It is typically made in desperation as, mm -hmm. and has an exceptionally small chance of working. <laughs> because this pass is so difficult, uh, it is called a Hail Mary in reference yeah. to the Catholic prayer. And because it is so hard, the only way it will work is if God literally <laughs> helps you. Divine intervention. Divine intervention. So in 
1984, Democratic nominee Walter Mondale was down in the opinion polls by double digits against President Reagan. Mm -hmm. And he picked Geraldine Ferraro to bring a much needed spark to his campaign. Mondale made history and his numbers went up, but they eventually mm -hmm. lost. In 2008, John McCain was also substantially behind Barack Obama before he picked Sarah Palin as his running mate. Everyone thought that Palin would liven up McCain's campaign, and she did briefly before she started going off script on camera saying the mm -hmm. wrong things. Mm -hmm. The selection of Geraldine Ferraro and Sarah Palin were historic, but they were tokenist. The American public was just not ready for a woman vice president. Fast forward to 2020. The political context has changed. The Democratic Party campaign is doing well. Biden is leading in the polls and there were 13 mm. women, each well qualified to get the nomination. And six of those nominees were women of color. The nomination of Kamala Harris was a reflection that women were electable and they deserved to be there on merit. Oh, yes. In our view, this is the context in Kenya. There were women in both Azimio and UDA who were qualified to get the nomination on merit. Mm. And the support for Martha Karua from both sides of the political divide shows that her nomination is recognized as a win for all women. Mm. It is women supporting other women to, make the re to break the remaining glass ceilings. Mm. And what does it mean for Azimio? An outright win, obviously, <laughs> because yeah. as Margaret Thatcher said, if you want something said, ask a man. If you want something done, mm. ask a woman. Mm. Okay. Yes, so true. Yes. That is true. We have a three-part criteria that we use to judge the headlines for you. We ask ourselves two questions. Is the headline topical or speculative, repetitive or groundbreaking and thoughtful or just plain lazy? I love all of them. I do. I love so all of them. Fantastic headlines. Mm. In honor of Martha Karua. In, they are in honor yeah. of Martha Karua, but I do think that there are clear winners. I'm leaning towards Daily Nation, Strength of a Woman and Standard, Rise of the Iron yes, mm. yes, yes. Just to go on a tangent for a moment, yeah. I think that if you just look generally, as you mentioned, Miss Kay, about the reception that Martha's announcement has made, not only in the country, but in the continent and across the world, the difference between her reception and yeah. that of Rigavi is yes. visible. Yeah. It it's is. like night and day. I wonder whether someone in Karen is thinking, can we go back? Let's go back I a couple know. of days. I can know. I change I my they decision? If they went with somebody like Susan Kiheka, mm -hmm. that would have right? been a really fresh ticket. You exactly. Know? It really future. would. And that would have cancelled out the euphoria of Mata Karua. That but here we are. Yeah. Premium tears. <laughs> premium <laughs> tears. <laughs> I do think that we give a winning headline, a double winning headline, yes. to the Daily Nation and the Standard. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are also on your TV screens. You can find us on Pang, Free to Air, Go TV, and Star Times. And we will choose a winning cartoon. A winning cartoon because we can. We're going to give it to Ozone of the Star. They, Mother Rao. Yes, they showed Kalonzo Martha Rao. Yeah. <laughs> I do love that one. Nice I'll, one. Yes, it is. I'll end with a quote from Nancy Pelosi, Speaker mm. of the United States House of Representatives. Women are leaders everywhere you look. From the CEOs who run a Fortune 500 company to the housewife who raises her children and heads her household. Our country was built by strong women and we will continue to break down walls and defy stereotypes. I quote this to Mata Have a great day.